Hey, I'm Kristen. And I'm Ashley. And this is Locked in a Closet. Join us as we tell each other stories of true crime, the paranormal, urban legends, and all things spooky. Welcome back, everybody. Hello. How's it going? Hello. Hello. (laughs) Good. It's going good. Let's do this all the time. I mean, (laughs) yeah. Anything There's not much. No. I, it's, my life is very, it feels like Groundhog Day. I know. I know that just happened. And can I just say, Wyerton Willie, (laughs) this is not going to be an early fucking spring. (laughs) It I snowed all day. I saw a thing the other day that was like, wow, okay, so you'll listen to a groundhog, but you won't wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's so accurate. Oh my so god. Accurate. Where did that come from? The I, whole groundhog. I meant thing. to look that up the other day because I was like, <laughs> why do we do why this? do we let the groundhog <laughs> dictate? Yeah. And also like and it's doesn't. not just us, like it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, North America. Yeah. I don't know. It's like I, I I don't get it. This I don't. I don't believe it's going to be an early spring. It's literally snowing right now. So yeah. Oh, wow. Although, like I did say last episode, I did hear birds. So yeah, they're just very little... exciting. When I look out my window right now, I can see our Christmas lights that are still up, and also icicles that I are like a ours. foot and a half long. Like they're huge. We don't have any icicles on our house. I guess like the slope of our roof. I guess whatever. Yeah. But like, there's a house like a couple doors down that like they're like touching the ground. <laughs> oh my god, that's scary. Yeah, I always I'm terrified. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I'm gonna move my thing. Let's see, uh, no, it's oh, too no, white. It's too bright. It's too. They're bright, yeah. huge. <laughs> like they could kill somebody. They're massive. Right. Anyway. And like, I mean, like, isn't that like the whole CSI, like the perfect, cr- well, not perfect crime. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah either that or like a meat bullet. <laughs> like... I don't think that would fire. <laughs> it's frozen. It would just, well, it would explode. Meat bullet. I don't know. <laughs> Clearly, I'm never going to kill anybody. So it's okay. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you if you have seen the TikTok trend lately. Of like oh. the feta pasta. I was gonna ask you, it was that oh. fucking feta pasta? Oh my god, <laughs> is it good? Have you it's tried it? Incredible. We've had it like five times. Not actually. Really? We've had it like twice in the last two weeks. It's so good. And it it's looks, so easy. It looks so gross. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. I don't even like cooked tomatoes that much, but like yeah. Oh, they're so. You know good. what? I'm willing to try it because I love pasta. First of all, yeah. Um, feta cheese is pretty fucking baller. I just don't really like tomatoes, but like. I definitely make like a tomato based pasta sauce. So it's like not, I'm not opposed to it. But. Yeah. Every time we make it, I'm just like, oh my God, we should do like grilled zucchini in this too, because we do a grilled zucchini in like cast iron pan and you just like almost yeah. burn it and it's so good. So next time we do it, I'm definitely going to do zucchini too. Chris. I'm not, I'm not the biggest zucchini fan, but we grew zucchini last year because we got a, we built a garden and I was like, fuck, I'm just try whatever. And so then we actually got a lot of zucchini. I was like, fuck, I don't even like zucchini. Jeff yeah. does. He'll just like grill it. Um, so I made these like zucchini ball things that are like, you know, you kind of mix it with like breadcrumbs and and then you um bake it. Like meatballs kind of, but almost, yeah. It's okay. like diff- and you bake it and oh my god. And then I made him make a marinara dip for it. Mm. That was something I saw on TikTok actually. I love Yum. finding res- recipes on TikTok. I know they're so good. We were just talking about whipped coffee too. Yeah, I haven't been in so long, but I lived off of those for the first like half oh of God. 2020. <laughs> I know they're so, uh, they're so good. I don't care if it's trendy. I loved them. I know. And then, yeah, then they're just like they're kind of annoying to make, so I kind of just stopped. I know it's such a pain in the ass. Actually, yeah. a lot of people. The first time I made it, I was gonna like whip it by hand, and Michael's like, "What are you doing? That's gonna take you 12 years." <laughs> oh so I just God. used it, like an immersion blender, like the stick blender. I used. Yeah, so I use my um, KitchenAid mixer with the whisk yeah. attachment. Yeah. yeah, so much faster. I don't yeah, know what then I was, it was like, doing. So many fucking dishes. Yeah, yeah, it's a little excessive, but oh my god, there were so many. Yeah. I would always put like the butterscotch, like the ice cream butterscotch syrup oh in it god. too. I would add Nesquik to mine, like the Ooh. chocolate syrup. Yeah, yeah. Like a little mocha. Yeah, mm, I love it. So good. Mocha, mocha. I fucking never thought I'd miss coffee, but I miss coffee right now. Yeah. And I don't even really drink it. It's just like, you know, like when it's such when like a you, social thing yeah or like when you could leave the house it was like let's go get a starbucks or like a tim yeah. or whatever and mm-hmm. now it's like i'll get a hot chocolate like i'm a fucking 12 year old <laughs> i'll make it myself <laughs> yeah i don't have a marshmallow <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's definitely uh it's 
definitely weird but think just mm-hmm. think of how much money we're saving not going to oh i know day. it's honestly insane <laughs> it's stupid how expensive it is like um i, well, I watched the tick <laughs> all we ever fucking talk about is TikTok, I know. <laughs> whatever <laughs> That's all we fucking do right now. Um, I saw a TikTok of this girl and she was trying like a drink. I think it must have been uh whose drink was it? Some celebrity. I'm drawing a blank. Oh, Trisha Paytas. It was Trisha Paytas's like signature drink. Uh-huh. She said it came to nine dollars. Oh my god. Nine dollars. <laughs> I always see actually there's this TikTok account. It's, I think his thing's like Timmy's boy or something like that. Uh- <laughs> and people just like request drinks for him oh, or like food yeah. for him just to get it to more. Yeah. And everything he gets, he's like, oh my God, this is so good. And I'm like, well, I know I need to write that down because yeah. <laughs> and it's like a lot of off-menu stuff, which I'm always so nervous to like kick. Can I just say fucking Starbucks and oh, your I goddamn their menu. elitism? There is no menu. There yeah. is no menu. You're just supposed to know. How am I supposed to know? Yeah. I go maybe once every few months, if that. And I, I go by the menu because I assume that's what's available. But no, they have more than that. I don't know. I just yeah. I always have a, like it's like a club that I'm not a part of. I yeah, I have my go-to Starbucks order, which is yeah. a grande soy chai latte with no water. And then if I happen to see something else on the menu, mm-hmm. then I'm like, oh, I'll get that. But if not, if I don't see anything, then I'm just like, okay, I already know what I'm getting. <laughs> like, I have yeah. to, like prepare myself. I, I know. <laughs> like, especially when you have anxiety and you're like, oh my God. And like, I hate when the menu is like right by the speaker and it's like, I need like five minutes, yeah. please. Like, and then like, there's always a line up behind you. So you don't want yeah. to be like, oh, can you give me a minute? <laughs> yeah. Because then you're just a dick. Yeah. Honestly, like, you know, anyone else with stomach issues will know that Starbucks drinks don't sit well. So I always get the fucking refreshers anyway. Because <laughs> yeah. it's the only thing that doesn't make me, like, need the bathroom immediately. Yeah. Michael doesn't drink coffee. Like, he hates the taste of coffee. And he used to oh, always really? get the key lime refresher from Starbucks. But they don't have that anymore. So anytime we go, like, through the drive through I'm like, do you want anything? He's like, no. <laughs> get like, okay, tell well. me to get one of the other refreshers. They're also I good. don't think he likes them as much. It was no. the key lime. Like, he loves anything key lime. So. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just really key lime's pretty him. good. Yeah, but also it's fine because I usually pay because it's always my idea to go. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't have to buy anything. <laughs> Jeff loves coffee. He like he's definitely one of those like snobby like black coffees. This, you know, he's trained himself to enjoy black coffee. But, no, thank no, you. It's not coffee unless half of it's like cream. <laughs> yeah, like sweetener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chocolate. Yeah, really. That's yeah. Uh, I get them like every cream. time. Yeah. <laughs> you just want the sugar. You, you just... get more like energy from the sugar. It's than not the, the caffeine. caffeine. <laughs> it's the sugar. <laughs> exactly. Oh god. No wonder it fucking upsets my stomach. <laughs> yeah, really. It's just the sugar. <laughs> just the sugar. You know you're getting old when you have to like watch what you fucking eat. Yeah. It's sad, hey. It's like you're out at a restaurant and you're like, hmm, do I want to have heartburn later? Or <laughs> Do I want to enjoy my rest of my night? Yeah. Oh my god. I hate it. I hate it. All right. What are we talking about this week? Cults. Cults. Cults and all the culty fun. Goodness. Culty, culty, cult, cult. Yeah. Organized religion. Yeah. <laughs> no, <just> Yay. <laughs> uh, do you want me to go first? This I think you went first last. Yeah. Yeah. I think I went first last. Episode. All right. Mine's a little bit short because. It was just kind of hard to find the information, just like everything else that I Ugh. choose to do. Apparently, are we bad at this? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um. So I am doing the like religious aspect, I guess, of celestial seasonings. I cannot get over company. this. <laughs> so I think you had actually sent me a TikTok like a while yeah. ago about it, being like, "Oh my god, one of us has to do this." Yeah. So. Because, like, I love that tea. So, I'm like, it's got a cult surrounding it. No, I it. have that tea in my cupboard right now. I have the oh uh, the Bengal spice, which is the best one, just by the way. <laughs> I can't have that. Any, like, chai or bang, like, oh. the spicy stuff gives me headaches. I don't know what it oh is. God. All I drink in tea. Mm-hmm. That or, like, Earl Grey because it smells I like Fruit Loops. Earl Grey. Yeah, it smells like Fruit <laughs> Loops. <laughs> okay, so the sources that I got from this. Everything was talking about this one article that came out, and I searched so hard for the article, and it was, like, unavailable. So I I don't know what happened to it. The same fucking issue. There was supposed to be this 12-part podcast talking about the cult that I'm talking about. Literally, it was just dedicated to this cult, and I could not find... I, all I could find was the news articles talking about this podcast coming out, and then Weird. I could not find the podcast. And I was like, really, like recent articles, or was this supposed to happen like a long time ago? It was like a couple, like two years ago. So it was like oh. you know saying like it should be out, and I'm like, oh, okay, the podcast definitely should be out by now. Couldn't find any like any trace of this podcast, which makes me a little scared to Weird. 
record yeah <laughs> really like, <laughs> are they gonna fucking off us, Find us and... <laughs> delete our podcast yeah yeah, yeah. no i had to too i don't know i don't even remember what the article was called now because it was a while ago that i did this research but anyway the ones that i could find uh there's an article on food and wine which is <laughs> randomly uh it's called sleepy time tea and the little known religion behind it and then there was an article from inverse.com called cults conspiracies and the twisted history of sleepy time tea which now that we're talking about this more i'm like was the cult that it was just like roofies <laughs> in the tea to make you sleep <laughs> No, surprisingly. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, not that I could find anyway. Who knows? <laughs> <but> the, <laughs> the actual yeah, article right. that everybody was talking about. So, okay. Celestial Seasonings was founded in 1969 by a group of hikers in Colorado. Hikers. The group would hike the Rocky Mountains and they would pick herbs, herbs, <laughs> whatever. Herbs. We just talked about this. I don't know how yeah. to say it. Yeah. Um, and plans to create their own blends of tea. So the company was named after co-founder Lucinda Ziesing, I think is how you say it, Z-I-E-S-I-N-G, um, her flower name. So that's what we're dealing with right now. Hmm. Um, Mo Siegel was the leader of the group, and he went on to be the face of the company. So the company is now huge. I mean, obviously, everybody obviously. has had some kind of tea from them. And they're most well-known for Sleepy Time Tea, which is a blend of chamomile, spearmint, and other herbs. Herbs. Yeah. <laughs> When my brothers and I were little, like my mom did daycare, so we always had like a bunch of kids in the house, and we would play store. Um, and sometimes I would own a hotel. And, uh, sleepy time tea was on the menu because <laughs> we always had it when we were kids. Was this like the kids would just sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I'd like take all the cushions off of the thing and then like have it like in the hallway in my basement, and each like door frame would be a different hotel room. <laughs> it was oh great. My God, that's I amazing. was an entrepreneur. Oh, Look at yeah. me now. <laughs> I think you should run a, run a hotel. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> it would be horrible. I'd be like, do you want some tea? I don't know. Yeah. Like, all your sheets? No. <laughs> yeah. Ew, I'm not You're touching fine. that. Yeah. <laughs> do it yourself. Yeah. Siegel was an avid believer in the New Age Bible, which is also known as the Urantia book, I think is how you say it. Honestly. I'm really bad at pronunciation. I'm just I'm also Bibles and religion. I'm, you, I don't know how many revisions there are. New Testament, Old Testament. Uh, is there another one? I literally am the worst person to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. And also, can I just say, I forgot we were talking about cults. <laughs> you were like talking about teen. I'm like, oh, religion's getting involved. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it, it, of course. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> what are we recording again? <laughs> oh, God. Cults, Ashley, cults. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this book was published in 1955, and it's inspired by the Seventh-day Adventist movement, which again, I have no clue. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> the book I'm was so sorry. <laughs> the book was also apparently communicated by a man who was possessed by aliens. Oh, so aliens real. are involved. Okay, this is where it gets <laughs> culty, when aliens get involved. Yeah. It's also believed, like just another version of what could have happened, that the book was written by William Sadler, who was a psychiatrist with a deeply rooted racist philosophy. So that's mm. great. According to this book, there's many different sons of God and they live on different planets. So in this religion, our <laughs> world <laughs> is known as Urantia. I'm trying really hard to keep this <laughs> race. I'm sorry. It gets so much better. Just you wait. They live on different planets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Urantia, I really hope I'm saying that right, because I'm saying Who it a cares? lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's apparently number 606 in our planetary group, which is called Santania. Okay. So okay. <laughs> I'm lost, but I'm later. not going to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, Siegel discovered the book in 1969, which is the same year that he started Celestial Seasonings. He has admitted in like... <gasps> Wait, the name, Celestial, yeah, the planets, okay, yeah. I see. the puzzle He's... pieces are clicking. <laughs> <laughs> He's admitted in, like, interviews and stuff that the book's ideas, quote, were the inspiration for the uplifting quotes on the sides of the tea boxes and bags, so there's, like, oh. a pair, I've never I've noticed, never noticed. Yeah. but I guess there's, like, quotes on, like, the individual tea bags and stuff like that. I guess if you can buy, like, no, that doesn't make sense, because... You get, like, the box of the tea. It has, like, the, the yeah, but, like, like, wax paper. How was it in the 60s? How was tea packaged back no, then? Yeah, I don't fucking know. Is different or now. was it the 60s? 69, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or 70s. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Why do all these cults come around the 70s? <laughs> oh, my God. My, I don't know. Mine forms in the 70s, time. too. Yeah. A lot like of drugs. serial killers. <laughs> oh, my God. Like cults were just... 
popular. Are our parents okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think ours are. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It was a wild time. So former employees have said that they would use the quotes from the book in staff meetings to make sure that the moral values of the company were being followed. The problem with this is that the values in the book are incredibly racist. So mm. on Urantia, so our, what do they call like, it? Is that like our galaxy? I'm it's our world. Is like oh, So I okay. guess there's like different planetary groups. Our okay. planetary group that we're in is Santania. And then our world within that planetary group is Uranit. <laughs> your end yeah so he okay i think i'm sort of yeah yeah so i guess there's like different stories for all of the worlds it just sounds like a book like he picked up like yeah it's like a like lord of the rings or yeah, <laughs> yeah game of thrones and he's like this is bible this is real yeah <laughs> so uh, in our world there are six colored races that exist so there's red orange yellow green blue and indigo and all of these races have a superiority order so this is a quote from the book itself. The earlier races are somewhat superior to the latter. The red man stands far above the indigo, black race. So that's great. The yellow okay. race uh, usually enslaves the green, while the blue man subdues, subdues the indigo. The blue race corresponds with Caucasians, and indigo corresponds to black. So who's red? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> Well, know. I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so basically in the book, it says that Adam and Eve, uh, who were fair-skinned, blue-eyed beings, visit the planet and purify the planet by eliminating inferior races. Ooh. Uh, it states that this didn't go according to plan on Earth, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, so, quote, you must now work out your planetary problem of race improvement by other and largely human methods of adaption and control. So they fucked up. They're like, that's nah, between you guys now. Yeah. <laughs> so it says that evil comes like to our world, which like they imply is like illnesses and diseases because unfit people haven't been eliminated. Ooh. So like they blame like really bad things on like so racist. Yeah. 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 So on the indigo people. I wrote, wow. Anyway, just overall racist bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah. Racist and like weird. So the book also claims that Lucifer, Satan, Adam, Eve, and Jesus are all extraterrestrial beings who have just visited Earth. It also claims that when we die, we are reincarnated from planet to planet and then finally to paradise. Hmm. That actually kind of reminds me, weirdly, and I cannot remember what the name of this like idea is called. It's got a weird name where it's basically like you are everyone that's ever existed on Earth. It's so weird. It's like every time you die, you're reincarnated either back in time or forward in time. Like time is no nothing. Oh, so there's like a limited number of people that could exist. No, it's like there's just one person and he oh. and he or she is just every person that's ever existed. But every time they die, they're reborn at a different time. So like say you die as who you are now, but then you get or this person gets reincarnated back into like you know, sixth century China and they are, they were a little Chinese girl. And it's like the reason, like you are the reason, like you're doing everything bad to, to literally yourself because you are every person. I can't remember the name of this. That's so weird. I have to look it up real quick, but yeah. Yeah. I've never heard yeah. of that. That's really weird. I just, I learned about that the, the other day and I was like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what if? I just don't understand how that works. Like, how are there more than one person? How it's just because like person? yeah because like time means nothing <sighs> i <laughs> came like, up with this <laughs> um, someone who is really high on drugs yeah. <laughs> oh, i wish i i feel like i'm doing a really bad job of this and i, I apologize <laughs> it's okay i'll have to look it up and then like next episode i'll yeah we maybe talk about it more yeah because i feel like Weird. i'm not explaining it well that's what it reminds me of so strange anyways go on <laughs> anyway so we're pretty much at the end right now um as of 2002 he's no longer at celestial seasonings which is probably for the better he is now the president of the urantia foundation and he hosts weekly study groups at his house that's siegel obviously okay and so he was like the former president of the company yeah he was like the face of the company he was one of the founders and now he's just you know okay heaven so the tea itself unfortunately well i don't say unfortunately but like isn't the cult it's just like yeah like the leader of <sighs> not the leader of the founder of the company it was like yeah and is still i guess deeply into this really strange religion 
crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, it sounds bad to say. I was like hoping for more, but yeah. I yeah, mean, when I was doing the like, research, because it, like it sounded like from that TikTok that it's like, oh my god, this like whole company yeah. is like based off a of cult, but no, like it was just no. the owner. <laughs> and then he was like, it. kind of pushing it on his employees a little bit, it yeah, like, a little bit, which, and like they use like the like the ideals of the religion, I guess. Minus which, the, I don't think the T is has like races. I mean, no. I don't know, but yeah, it's pretty hmm. shitty that he that's that. um extremely fascinating <laughs> yeah i know isn't it weird yeah i was doing this research and i was like what <laughs> like what am i reading right now yeah yeah, yeah. it's just it's wild it's mm-hmm. and it's kind of like i'm glad he's no longer part of it because it's like oh shit like i was supporting that tea and that cult religion or whatever yeah because does not sound great no does not, not sound at great. all <clears throat> i mean any cult really <laughs> yeah never no, honestly <laughs> I'm fairly, I'm fairly anti cult. Honestly, like I hate to say, I'm fairly anti religion because that's same. That's a thing, you know. That's the thing to say that can isolate you from certain audiences. But yeah, yeah, no, I'm with yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. I'll stand well, beside you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll die on that hill. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's okay that yours is a little bit shorter because I think mine's fairly long and just very dark. Mm-hmm. I can't <laughs> just... wait to hear about it. Because you've been, like, you mentioned it a couple times and I have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Because, okay, well, I'll get into it. So <laughs> I'll start with my sources. Wikipedia, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, the Yellow Deli website. CBC News article by Michael Welch. An article from The Independent by Tony Patterson. I'm not saying the titles just because there's so many sources. That's and fine. I was like, this is going to take forever. Um, a Times Union article by Larry, Larry Rulson. An Inside Edition episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, an article by the Southern Poverty Law Center. And an article by Julia Shears in the Pacific Standard. Okay. So, I, and this was another one where it was like hard to find information from one source. So that's why there's so many. Because and I wanted to make sure I knew everything. Because right. this is like I said, I've been fascinated with this for so long. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I I think I've mentioned this before in previous episodes. I don't know if we kept it in or not, but yeah, I don't remember. I just know that you've yeah we've talked about it. <laughs> and the reason I wanted to cover this cult. So this is I'm doing the Twelve Tribes slash Yellow Deli cult. And so the cult name actually is the 12 tribes. Okay. And the, the Yellow Deli is basically like a chain of businesses they run. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, the reason I wanted to, to cover this is because town, just outside of the town I grew up in. So in Chilliwack, BC, there is a Yellow Deli. And every time I would like drive along the highway, you'd see the big sign for the Yellow Deli. It was huge. It was like a big billboard. And it was like, it was so cute looking. It was like yellow. And the sign had like, their logo has like a cute little like flower in it, like a little 70s flower. Like it just looked really retro. And I always wanted to... um to go there but we never ended up going because it's like it was like on the every time we were like driving camping or something it was never really on the way right and then a friend of mine who lives in Chilliwack she she grew up there and she lives there she's mentioned she's gone a few times and she's kind of told me and then told me how kind of like weird her experiences have been in there which made me kind of like look into it Mm -hmm. and then I think I don't remember what podcast I heard like a while ago had brought up the yellow deli and I was like wait there's other yellow jellies like what and then yeah i found out that it's <laughs> it's a cult that's crazy yeah i always wanted to go I, it always looked like such a cute little place like very rustic like the outside of the building like all of the all of them locations are man- like kind of look the same like really rustic really natural organic like and then like all their food is all organic all their bread they bake all of their food oh wow they grow so it sounded so cool especially in like right now because it's yeah. so hip, hip to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. So my friend, she's has gone there several times. She said the food's really good, but she's since stopped since, you know, finding out. <laughs> yeah. So she says every time she's gone, she's been approached basically by the workers there. Maybe not every time, like mostly if she's alone or with like just her sister. And they basically approach you and they talk to you and they try to invite you to like an event they're having like they're like oh come to like one of our masses or come to one of our like you know weekend party things they like they oh my really God, that's tr- like a cult like in a tv show yeah they like, like they, find you and like try to they really try to convert you especially young single women if they're there yeah so apparently they're all around the world they have these various like restaurants or bakeries or coffee shops locations they all generally have the same name it's like common grounds uh yellow deli i'm trying to remember the name of the other one but they're literally like locations in new york vermont california colorado tennessee north carolina Holy. um so like a lot more states i didn't mention and then they're in japan spain australia england what Ar- argentina and british Have columbia never heard of this? i know and and i found out 
There's one in Kingston now in oh Ontario. We should go. Yeah. <laughs> no, we shouldn't. <laughs> Trust me, when I get into this, you're going to be like, yeah, no, we're going to stay as far fucking away. Okay, there. okay. I'm so excited. So I'm going to give like a brief overview of what their website says for their, okay. of their history. So like this is the Yellow Deli website. This is even the 12 tribes. This is like the deli. Okay. Just to, you know, just to see what they, what they say about themselves. Oh I always find it so interesting. I'm so excited. <laughs> This is just kind of like, as I was reading it, I was kind of making notes, so it's a little rough, but it's like, so it sounds like they were formed in the 70s in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they kind of weirdly talk for a while about hippies and like how drugs were killing their friends, and it was just kind of like setting, the way they wrote it, just kind of set the pace that war was bad and peace is good, like typical 70s like Mm -hmm. talk. Okay. So like, so far I'm following, I'm like, yeah, okay. They opened the first deli claiming that they were serving healthy food in the midst of like a fried chicken culture, which like Tennessee, it's like the South, right? So like, okay, yeah, Mm -hmm. unhealthy fried foods. It was a success because it was something different, right? Like people are like, oh, it's cool. And I mean, like, especially right now with health healthy foods like so trendy mm-hmm. um especially in like places like california and stuff and then oh uh, and then i wrote oh no <laughs> now it's here where they get religious Uh-oh. <laughs> oh geez they say at the bottom of every hand-drawn menu was scribbled a sincere provocative question we serve the fruit of the spirit why not ask so the term the fruit of the spirit comes from the bible verse about like love and joy and peace bible being the fruit which would be produced by the lives of those who knew God. So, you know, it just sounds religious at this point, mm-hmm. right? Sound, mm-hmm. God being a part of a restaurant like Chick-fil-A. Like, it's not uncommon. Yeah. Yeah. And then especially in the South, right? Like, I'm sure it was popular. So their idea was to have this, like, pressure-free mantra at the bottom of the menu, which, like, gave you the option to ask if you wanted to, even though... Like I said, my friends, ha- they ha- they approach you and they talk to you about it. Oh my god, that's so um, weird. Yeah, but they say on their website, it was served at our deli with no pressure, only an experience. And if the person wanted to ask, well, they were certainly free to do it. I don't like, think anybody would like see something like that and be like, what's oh, this? Can yeah. I join your cult? <laughs> yeah, like, I guess if no. you're like already religious, you might like comment on it. Who Maybe. Knows? Yeah, they go, ah, what a relief, no pressure. Except for, you, no, you approach, you approach people. That's pressure. <sighs> Anyways. Yeah, and I, and I wrote, which I heard from my friend, is that you don't even have to ask. They'll just start talking to you about it. <laughs> so that's a fucking lie. <laughs> yeah. So they go on to say, and this is another quote from the website, they wanted to have a place where people from all walks of life could come and touch a living demonstration of God's love. I just want to, I just want to asterisks the all walks of life because we'll circle back oh god we'll circle back to their racism yikes <laughs> yeah all walks of life all as long as you're life. caucasian and yeah <laughs> and, and straight oh my god that's another thing okay i'm, I'm getting too far ahead of myself <laughs> and too riled up <laughs> yeah so so far honestly reading this it all sounds standard standard religious not my personal cup of tea religion isn't my personal cup of tea but hey some Which businesses <laughs> yeah That means I can make the choice to not go there. I don't have to go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm basically paraphrasing here and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm interpreting this wrong. So don't at me, (laughs) (laughs) but they basically like, like this about us is pretty long and they, they keep going on about how they almost seem like burnt out with the new Testament and how they think that it was causing people to be more materialistic. So like a new movement of sorts began. And that last part is in their words. And then they, they go on, they continue to hint that initially people called them a kind a c- <laughs> I think that was a Freudian slip if I've ever heard one. <laughs> I'm crying. Probably still happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm, so- <laughs> I'm not sorry, but. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try that again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They go on to kind of hint that initially people called them a cult. With an L. (laughs) With an L. (laughs) And how they were offended by that. And they they basically compared themselves to the Salem witch trials. They're like, y'all are on a... (laughs) Yeah, they're basically like, you're all on a witch hunt. We're not a cult. Like, relax. So, like, they they get defensive in this that they're not a cult. And I'm like... "Hmm." okay (laughs) i mean if the shoe fits (laughs) 
yeah so the, basically the last part of like the last few paragraphs of their about us page is basically like a rant that they're not a cult i'm like oh my god if you need to do who are you trying page? to convince <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> and so they basically say that nothing compared to the selfish mis- selfish mis- <laughs> <laughs> i've thrown myself off now by saying the c word <laughs> They basically say nothing compared to the selfishness of man by saying that they are still small in comparison to a huge fatal flaw of human beings. And that fatal flaw being selfishness and her many manif- manifestations. So they're saying that, like, we're not that bad compared to, like, the fatal flaw of the world. Like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> if you're not that okay. bad, that means, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I know that I'm sounding already so biased that I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> like, I don't think the goal of this was ever to, like, convert anybody. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. And it's, like, probably unprofessional that I'm picking, like, I'm saying, like, cults are bad and this cult is bad. But, like, it really is. Mm-hmm. And if you're part of it, you're not going to l- listen to me anyways. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'll try to be more unbiased and just say facts, but I cannot help. All right, so that was their About Me page. So I wanted to give them a fair shot of explaining themselves first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I did go on the 12, 12, 12, it's like a tongue twister, the 12 Tribes website. And they didn't, their website's really weird and like really badly designed. And there Mm -hmm. wasn't really an About Me page. But it did say, like one little small part at the bottom of the website says, we live in 12 different geographical areas spread over several different countries on this globe. We are now 12 Tribes. That's all it says. Hmm. And, um, oh no, so that's what they still say in their About Me page. So, and then they have the link to the 12 Tribes website. So I clicked on that. And this is the short description that the website says. The 12 Tribes is a confederation of 12 different self-governing tribes composed of self-governing communities. We are disciples of the Son of God, whose name in Hebrew is Yahusha. We follow the pattern of the early church in Acts 2, colon 44 and 4, colon 32. Truly believing everything that is written in the old and new covenants of the Bible and sharing all things in common. So that's what they have on their on the 12 tribes website. Well, okay. Or is it co- <laughs> coven- covenants? I think I said covenants, but covenants. So I mentioned before the Yellow Deli started in 1972 in Tennessee. It was founded by a man named Gene Spriggs, who is now known as Yannick. I'm, think- I'm not sure if that's how to pronounce it. I couldn't find a pronunciation anywhere. It's Y-O-N-E-Q. I would probably guess Yannick. Yannick, right? Like, Yon, 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 yeah, Yannick. So, I don't refer to him as Yannick because I don't want to play into his little religion. So, I'll call him either Gene or Spriggs from now on. Oh, and his wife. So, they were, they were found, they founded this together. Okay. And I actually just discovered that he died this January, just a couple days ago. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens to the tribes. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like back in the 1970s, he and his wife had attended several churches for a while to find like the right fit for them before finally settling with the first Presbyterian church. Okay. I think I said that right. And they also hosted like a Bible study group. I say this in like air quotes. No one can see me. <laughs> they had this like Bible study group event with other believers in their home. So they would like get together and I guess like preach at each other. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i assume they probably um, just preach at each other yeah <laughs> that's what we do when we hang out so yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. um yeah so with like other believers in their home and they especially recruited a lot of like local youths that needed places to stay inviting them into their home so a lot of these youths are like runaways and drug addicts who were desperate for help and, right. and needed a place to say, like, I think they were just like, fuck it, I'll just get into this religion. Yeah. So however, they discovered that the Presbyterian church that they had joined was both a bit classist and racist and not super welcoming of their little band of misfits that they brought with them, <laughs> their little group. Okay. So they didn't like that. They're like, oh, you're not so welcoming. But apparently their final straw for leaving the church was arriving arriving at the church for like a, I'm assuming like a Sunday service on January 12th, 1975, to find that, that it had been canceled for the Super Bowl. Yeah. So, I mean, as we mentioned, materialism is not something they love. Yeah. So it sounds like them and like their little misfit band and like a bunch of other people basically left the church and kind of created their own, which they called the Vine Christian Community Church. And then that has now since evolved into 12 tribes. It's been renamed. At one point, it was like the Masonic Jews or something. I don't know. But yeah, so now it's 12 tribes. And then to support the people 
their little band of miscreants that they had brought into their house, they basically, they opened the first yellow deli where the kids worked for room and board. Okay. So that's kind of where it came from. And that's still kind of what the yellow deli is evolved. So obviously this caused issue in the community, them leaving and basically creating their church and like taking people from other churches, mm -hmm. which caused several people to label Gene Spriggs as a cult leader. So I'm assuming this is where the cult stuff comes in and they're like, we're not a cult. Not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, the shoe fits. Yeah. <laughs> and in the summer of 1976, a man named Ted Patrick carried out a series of deprogrammings um, on like some of the children, I guess, but was unsuccessful and they were, they thrived on essentially. They opened a second location and I think a few more years later, but then they admitted that they were like heavily in debt. So then they closed all of their locations and moved to Vermont. So this move and then obviously like their lack of funds caused a lot of members to leave initially. They didn't go with them to um, Vermont. But by 1989, they basically were thriving again. They got really successful in Vermont and they opened several more locations around the world, which went on to rename themselves as the 12 tribes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's the brief history of like how it's formed. I'm going to get into a little of its beliefs and practices now. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> now this is where things start to go weird. So I'm going to, I'm going to read yeah, <laughs> now, trust me, it gets so much weirder. I'm going to read a lot of this off of just Wikipedia because I don't have a great understanding, especially of like religious stuff yeah, and like sure. they just write it so eloquently. So here's a quote. The 12 tribes beliefs resemble those of the Christian fundamentalism, the Hebrew roots movement, the Masonic Judaism and the sacred name movement. Could not tell you about any of those ones. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> Um, although I feel like Christian fundamentalism is the only thing I'm like more familiar with. And that's just like, the, Ooh, the there's a really Christians. good, um, YouTube channel. Actually, I sent you that one about the Duggars the other day, oh, yeah, I forgot but to watch it's that. called, uh, Fundy Fridays. And this girl just like talks about fundamental Christian. Ooh, oh yeah. my God. Like I've watched so many of her videos in the last <laughs> two days. It's crazy. So, however, the group believes that all other denominations are fallen and that they therefore refuse to align itself with any denomination or movement. So they're like, every religion's wrong. We're doing this right. Mm, sure. They, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I think that too, but. <laughs> You're half right. <laughs> You're half right. <laughs> You're so close. <laughs> they believe that in order for the Messiah to return, the church needs to be restored to its original form seen in Acts 2, colon 38 to 42 and Acts 4, 32 to 37. Ah, my favorite. <laughs> my favorite passages <laughs> so i went to read them because i'm like what the oh fuck? dear god why <laughs> <laughs> they're short thank god okay i you know i wanted to understand what they thought was how we should be acting okay so the first one didn't make a lot of sense to me so i'm deeply sorry if i'm interpreting it wrong <laughs> but basically what i gathered was that that first act was about turning away from sin and helping your fellow man turn away from sin i think that's about it it was basically like don't sin but there was no specifics on what i what but my instructions <laughs> were yeah and then the second act was all about being like materialistic and how that was bad and that no one must benefit and no one can hold proceeds of their land it all must be given back to those in need okay yeah that sounds like anti-capitalism <laughs> so much. i'm part i'm partly there so Converted. honestly <laughs> yeah it seems kind of harmless right like those are pretty understandable things to like want to believe in like yeah materialism's yeah. fucking stupid and also like sin i mean um whatever <laughs> <laughs> some sins are like murder or whatever yeah but, but you can like live with your boyfriend yeah it's yeah. fine <laughs> so like i said it's like it seems harmless but um, it's never it's never harmless when yeah. it comes to that so the 12 tribes believes that there are three eternal destinies it doesn't really elaborate what these eternal destinies are. I think, I think maybe this, this next part will. So after the fall of man, every person is given a conscience. And I think the fall of man refers to like, kind of like the whole like Adam and Eve thing. Okay. I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, so we already... shouldn't have done this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we're so <laughs> uneducated. We're religion and we're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like some cults are more like, you know, space themed. This one's just mm -hmm. based a lot on the some bibles that they've mushed together so yeah after the fall of man every person is given a conscious and then after dying every person goes to a state of being called death regardless of faith so okay death dying so i'm already lost I can get behind that. <laughs> yeah so upon the second coming which hasn't happened okay i think i don't know really believer don't know. <laughs> I know. i'm sorry so upon the second coming coming Believers will be brought back for the thousand years to reign with Yahusha. I think I hope I'm saying that right. Before the last judgment. At the end of this millennium, 
all of the non-believers will be judged according to their deeds and put into one of two groups, the righteous and the filthy slash unjust. So, and then the filthy and the unjust will be sent to the lake of fire while the righteous will go on to eternity and fill the universe. So again, that was, that was straight from Wikipedia because there's no way I could try to reword that. <laughs> yeah. But, but to me, it sounds pretty like, sounds radical, but honestly in terms, like in terms of religion, but it sounds kind of just like, their version of a rapture with a heaven and a hell okay yeah that's kind of what i'm understanding is like some sort of like their jesus yahusha is going to come back and then for after a thousand years some rapture is going to happen that's I love kind that of yahusha yeah I, 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 get, I explain that a little bit more it's just fun to hopefully say. i'm saying it right so i thought this was an interesting piece of really uh, information on discussing relationships of marriage this is this is how they do their marriage <laughs> If you're interested in somebody, there's basically like a waiting period where you express your desire to get to know them. Okay. And then you basically submit this <laughs> to the community. You go, hey, I like this person. So I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> like dibs kind of? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It's probably like <laughs> called it dibs. <laughs> and so basically if your parents approve or like say you're an adult and you've entered the community alone and you don't have parents, then the community must approve. So if they both approve regardless of how it is then you are then engaged there's no dating it's just oh my god yeah i could not imagine that no. and it's fairly young too like it's fairly young <sighs> oh and then when you're engaged then you're allowed to hold hands and that's it that's all you're allowed to do <laughs> um and so the weddings apparently are like these dramatized like pre-enactments of what they think will happen at the end of time when yahusha was returns are you joking <laughs> it's like a play they put a play on oh, of like the rapture yeah. basically and so it's basically when yahusha returned to earth for his bride so yahusha is basically what they call jesus because they felt that word represents the nature of jesus more <laughs> Rather than the word Jesus, they like Yahusha. <laughs> okay, know. okay. But it's basically Jesus. Okay. And I'm not actually sure if that means that all women are the brides of Yahusha or if they're putting on like a play for one specific woman. It's there's it's a gray area. <laughs> I don't know. I think the whole thing is. <laughs> yeah, I, I said I, it does not elaborate further. And honestly, I'm not sure if I want the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so men in this cult, let's call it a cult. Let's call it what it is are typically made to grow their beards long and then they have their hair styled in like a short pony so their hair is meant to be long but not too long and then it's always kept in like a ponytail okay and then women typically wear like floor length dresses usually like they're a lot more like modesty is key they have long hair i don't think they're really allowed to cut their hair very much and then during religious ceremonies and events they wear bonnets to cover like their head and their hair but like any other time's fine i'm not entirely sure why <laughs> and then like so people who have like encountered them or like you know gone to these the delis and stuff and see them they just often describe them as looking like a typical hippie like okay like clothes are pretty like baggy jeans and stuff for the men and like flannel like tie dye <laughs> yeah it's it's when they like people see them because they apparently they would often go to like concerts of like music that was more typically like hippie ish okay and try and recruit people there and they would just blend in right like they didn't look like they're a part of a cult really right they just look like a hippie and so the men and women were often given new names when they entered the community and they were typically hebrew i think they're all hebrew they're all just hebrew names that they okay. were given and so there was like so many rules and very like very strict rules about how they were allowed to dress and act some I'm as ridiculous as how much toilet paper you're allowed to use and how oh long your god and how long your fingernails are allowed to be what like so strict so they started this because there were issues with all of the other religions yeah and, and this is how they're fixing that <laughs> no yeah wow and all these rules came down from that like the gene guy the gene sprigs basically he's like written this oh pretty sure so all of the children are homeschooled sounds typical mm -hmm. um and i'll get into this later but there's accusations of child labor and child abuse oh. and yeah it gets dark um and i'm honestly not convinced that the issue is solved i think it's still going on so basically at a certain age teenagers basically become like apprentices to whatever the elders decide best fit them okay. so so they don't go like like i wrote they're sorted into their skills like <laughs> like the sorting hat <laughs> it's like in the giver have you ever read the giver oh god in high I've school in the movie yeah it's been they're a while like assigned their like jobs and like yeah their roles and stuff it's basically like that where like once they reach an age basically the people around them go like oh you know what you're really good at like baking or building like you're gonna be this okay. so college is never an option 
<laughs> they believe that college is not a healthy environment for children. <laughs> for children. Yeah, college is the unhealthy yeah. environment. They believe it's an unhealthy environment for learning and social development. So, okay. I mean, look at me. I went to college. I'm a, I'm a fucking <laughs> freak. <laughs> <laughs> So children aren't really allowed to play with toys. They don't have any toys. And they are not allowed to engage in fantasy play, as one article put it. So basically, like, no using their imagination. Like, what can they do? Just sit there? They're only allowed to read the Bible and the rules and scripture of the group. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and they also believe in corporal punishment. This is where I'm getting into the abuse now. Um, trigger warning. So they believe in corporal punishment and spanking with this, like, rod thing is the most common. So it's been, it's got a couple different names. I think calling it the rod is, like, the most common. But it's it's basically, like, you know when balloons are on, like, a little, like, wooden stick? Mm -hmm. It's like that. It's like a switch almost, like a, like a thin wooden stick. Okay. Yeah. So that's the most common, but ex-members claim that it gets far more abusive than that. Hmm. And so the practice it's called is called scourging, which basically means where a child would be hit repeatedly with the stick until they are bruised. Oh. Yeah. So there was a CBC article I read where a man named Michael Welsh actually went undercover and joined the 12 tribes. Oh my God. Yeah. It was really fascinating to read. Um, he described that in the first six weeks of his stay, he found over 20 of these rods hidden all around the community hidden in places that like if someone was just visiting they wouldn't necessarily find them like under beds like in bathrooms like on top of cabinets mm. like they were kind of just spread out everywhere so that in, in case someone needed to beat a child grab one quickly one available yeah that's crazy yeah so i would definitely describe them as kind of almost like a commune like religion like they mm -hmm. all lived on one one big area which i think is pretty typical of like most cults yeah but it was typical to be up really early like five or six a.m for a morning prayer thing Ugh. um then they would have breakfast and then everyone would then split off into their different work groups so depending on where you lived and like obviously all the different locations had different things but your tasks would range from sometimes you'd be like working in the deli like you'd either be a server or whatever or in the bakery baking all day long there's also they had like i want to say factories but like kind of not like factories because a lot of this happened like within the little communes but mm -hmm. you'd either like be packaging tea because i guess they sold tea or they would like <laughs> so <it's just> these... <laughs> oh my god have we found a connection <laughs> And then, of course, if you lived, like, out in the farms, then you'd be doing, like, farm work, like, milking, goats, gardening, even so much as, like, getting honey from the bees. They got their own honey. Like, oh, wow. They definitely did everything organically and whatever, which is, is cool in its own way. If it's mm -hmm. not a cult. But it's expected that you work up to 16 hours a day and you're not paid for any of this labor. Oh, my God. So, like, of course, like, you live rent-free and you get your food and meals, like, provided and clothes and stuff. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, like, new clothes were very scarce and, like, they were basically fought over when they were brought into the communities of, like, totally. people who needed them. Inside these communities, there's no evidence of technology of the world around. Like, there's no TVs, no cell phones, no radios, no newspapers, like, nothing. Wow. And so this Michael Welch guy who went undercover said that, he said that was honestly like kind of refreshing like being unplugged yeah is, is nice once in a while and he said that because of that he saw more people actually spending time with their children and just spending time outside with each other mm -hmm. he, he said he had a fond memory of playing like volleyball one time with like a big group of people but however this meant that they controlled what you were exposed to you didn't see outside media you didn't know what was going on and they limited the option like they didn't want you to think for them yourselves so that's partly why they did it yeah that makes sense yeah. So only certain members, like high-ranking like people on the totem pole, were allowed cell phones. And it was even discouraged, really, that they used them that much. And then internet access was extremely limited and really only allowed to be used for like running the business. Holy. Yeah, so like ordering shit and stuff, I'm assuming. Yeah, so like as I mentioned before, one of their ideals is basically no materialism and that no one person should hold profits over the other. So when you were to join the cult... It's expected that you you sell off your possessions or donate everything that you owned to contribute to the community when you joined. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, so if you're to join, you basically have to sell everything you own and then give them pretty much all your money. Like, like I don't give know. Give up your entire life basically. Yeah. Cuz that was their whole thing is like you need to live without materialism, which Okay, but you're just 
profiting yeah <laughs> honestly that's a little bit sus, sus as the kids say in my opinion <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to get a bit more into the child labor accusations, and there have been many over the years. The first, I think, was in 1984 in Vermont, so they like their original second commune. A hundred children were removed from the compound, so they raided it. They removed hundred children from the the compound, but later all the children were then returned because the raid was determined to be unconstitutional. I oh guess. Oh my god. Yeah, I guess like the warrant that they had was too broad and the a judge basically had to throw it out yikes yeah and then in germany in 2013 so more recent 40 children were removed from their community due to accusations of child abuse due to beating their children with that rod switch thing so i guess i don't know if there was like undercover video that someone had took that got leaked but it basically was video of like these kids just being beat like mercilessly like Mm -hmm. and i don't i should have looked about it looked in the states and i know in canada it's illegal but in germany too it's illegal to beat your kid so that's they were basically like perfect we've got the evidence yeah and so they went in and raided and then they took um the 40 children away and put them in foster homes and stuff and like what's really sad is i read an article that like some of them ran away and to try to get back to the community oh my god yeah like that's how deep the brainwashing goes oh yeah well and i guess like if that's all they've known yeah and it's like your family right so it's like not necessarily the family that's beating them Mm -hmm. it's like usually it's like the teacher or like just some random ranking member so a former member who actually ran away when he was 14 from the german commune he claimed that he was beaten for things as simple as imitating an airplane like what? The, like i said using his imagination and pretending like oh. probably going around being like room with his arms out that's so sad yeah and then he was beaten for days at 2 a.m because he kept wetting the bed which oh my god as we know bedwetting can definitely be a sign of trauma yeah so of course he's gonna keep wetting the bed yeah so sad so eventually he he ran away at 14 because he couldn't take oh, it good So this undercover video also showed children being forced to work on the farms and in the workshops. So, like, granted, like, helping your parents with farm chores is, like, one thing. Mm -hmm. But, like, this also isn't, like, the 1920s and the Dust Bowl. Like, like, there's child labor laws now. Yeah. It's, It's so heartbreaking. But, like, as I was writing this, I was like, but wait, how do, like, the Amish? Because, like, yeah, how do they get away with it? That's true. Eh? I'm, I, yeah, I don't know. Forgive my ignorance. I don't know much about the Amish either. So, yeah, I don't but know. it just made me think of that. I'm like, hmm, how, how different is that? Like, yeah, I guess they don't beat their children. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Did you ever watch that show on TLC? The like no, Amish. I heard about it though. It was horrible. I heard about it. Okay, so another instance I found um, was as recent as 2018, which was the show Insider Edition or Inside Edition <laughs> had a former member enter one of the cosmetic factories. So must they had like in Cambridge, New York, um, and they had a hidden camera on them, and they recorded underage children as old as 10 years old working in the factory. Holy pack- packaging cosmetics, yeah. So, and then this isn't the first time this happened either. So, I think back in 2001, Estee Lauder actually had, like, a contract with the 12 tribes. Um, really? Yeah. So, I guess, like, they did packaging for them. Okay. I'm, I'm not entirely sure on those details. But, so, I guess Estee Lauder had done a random inspection. And during that random inspection, they discovered children working in their little factories. And so, all of the companies involved in this have terminated their contracts, thank God. Mm-hmm. And they obviously didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And I'm sure it's still happening because this happened in 2018. Like, Yeah. That's so recent. That's yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. And, like, so the response to this, I'm, I'm assuming this is the 2018 one, was on Facebook. It was a Facebook post that basically they said, We make no apologies that we include our children in the tasks of our life. They wash dishes, they pull weeds in the garden, they sweep the floor. Most of those children were there on a Sunday visiting their parents on their own property. If they were putting tubes in boxes, it was for minutes, not hours, not days. The soap shop is on their home. It is their place. So when I say factories, I guess I kind of mean that, like, they would almost have like do it in the buildings on the commune or, right like, in their houses like just like take some stuff home and then package it mm-hmm. so it's not like a full-on like factory situation yeah so that's what's basically what they're trying to say they're like oh they were just visiting their family and like decided to help a little bit like sure no. yeah <laughs> no <sighs> so yeah that's fucked up yeah children have also died because of their rejection of modern medicine 
So during the 1980s, a whooping cough pandemic swept through the community. It didn't say which community because it was 12 or so or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then that killed at least one known child. So there could have been more, but one known child was killed from the whooping cough and then I'm not taking to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Their belief being, if God wanted them to live, they will be saved. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. One of those. <laughs> They also tried neglecting women who were having difficulties during birth, only for both those women to end up losing their child due to refusal to taking them to the Jesus. hospital on time. Yeah. Because they, they, I'll get into that more of how they control the whole childbirth thing too. So, and when they did eventually take them to the hospital, they dropped them off at the curb and left. Oh yeah. my God. And both of them survived, but both lost their child. Oh God. Yeah. So aside from the community being heavily involved with child abuse... They're also described as being extremely racist as well and believing that all gay people must be put to death. Oh, yep. my God. They considered homosexuality a capital offense. Yeah. Like, what year is this? I know. <laughs> How and what, what happened that? to the all walks of life? Yeah, really? Yeah. That's all walks of life asterisks. Like, yeah. Yeah. So... And then, like, this is what I said, even though Spriggs and his wife originally seemed to leave the original church due to classist and really racist beliefs, Spriggs' tune eventually changed and now preaches that blacks were destined to be slaves. Oh, my God. Could you fucking imagine that? That being the way you think? That's fucked up. Like, yeah, no. I mean, yeah. obviously, like, that's never okay, but especially, like, any time in the last, like, 50 years. Like, uh, Yeah. And and to, to not feel that way originally, like, it's weird. Yeah. So, of course, misogyny is also pretty typical, and it is expected that their women are submissive to their husbands without question, which often leads to abuse. I bet I'd get kicked out. <laughs> oh, my God. I would so get kicked out. You're like, hey, fuck yeah. you. <laughs> and, like, pretty much they're told who they are to marry. So, like I said, the court, like, so some guy could be like, I like, I like you, Kristen. And that's it. If the community nice. goes... Yeah, that's great. Then you're married to that man now. Like, oh my God. Uh, you don't get a say. Yeah, I would last about five minutes. And, then yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, and they're married off usually around 17, like fairly young, too. Oh, my God. And then they're basically, you're basically kind of told when to have children as well. But it's encouraged that you basically start as soon as possible and you have as many as possible. So the wow. use of pain painkillers during birth was strictly forbidden. And the reason for that is to atone for Eve's original sin. You're atoning for the <laughs> sin of Eve. Oh so you're god. not allowed to have a fucking any painkillers? Oh my god. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Then of course birth control is not allowed. Typically, I think only men are basically can be like the leaders. I didn't put the hierarchy or anything because it didn't really matter. But mm -hmm. and then women are only typically put in charge of things to do with like meal prep and cleaning. So, you know. Shocking. Yeah, shock. I don't think anyone's surprised. <laughs> I also believe that it's been mentioned, that I think on a Reddit thread too, like people that have visited there, they've noticed that women really won't speak unless spoken to. Like you're not really allowed to initiate. Holy. Yeah. So like many cults, leaving is nearly impossible, even though they say there's no pressure, stay as long as you like. Like I, like I mentioned before, when you first enter the, the tribe, the 12 tribes, you are to give up all your earthly possessions. So leaving, how could you leave when you have no money and nothing yeah. to your name, right? Like You don't know very... anybody and... Exactly. It's very difficult. And of course, in their believings, they're severely scared into believing that the worst harm imaginable will come to you if you leave. So like during like their ceremonies and preachings and stuff, they'll preach about people who have left or like tried to leave and basically talk in gruesome detail about how they like died. So I don't know if these are like made up stories just to like scare people being mm -hmm. like, oh, George tried to leave and then a fucking thunderbolt hit him <laughs> and then he burned to death. And like they basically like fear monger you into staying. Yikes. And in one of the articles I read, someone was trying to get a hold of ex-members to like interview and they basically said that they refused to talk because they still feared that wrath, that like divine intervention. Oh my basically. god. Right? Could you imagine that? Like they're out of it and they're still still in it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, like obviously that's all of the negatives. Um, <laughs> I covered a lot. Mm -hmm. So I and I went to Reddit because I wanted to see if anyone had any personal experiences other than my one friend. And you know, one thread I read actually had a ton of people talking about like their positive experiences with the community. But it, it was all a lot of like, oh yeah, I stayed with them because I guess they have a hostel in Spain. Like, oh, I stayed at the hostel for a few days. Like they were all super accommodating super nice like and of course that's just the people that 
go and then leave um, yeah and from what i've read they are very 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 nice to you at the beginning because they want you to join and i'm sure mm-hmm. living in it if you were fully in the whole brainwash thing like everyone's gonna be really nice to you within it like it's just everything else like the 16 hour work days where you're basically treated like slaves and yeah your, your kids getting beaten and working in the factories and yeah yeah so like there's nothing wrong with the commune lifestyle i know it's like super ideal to people like two of my closest friends would thrive in a commune if they could mm-hmm. make their own little commune with like all their f- people they wanted like it sounds ideal I just feel like so does communism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It just sounds ideal. And there's nothing wrong with if anyone wants to be part of like religion. Some people need that. Some people need the structure mm-hmm. or they like need it for if they have like a drug or alcohol abuse, like they need that help to like, yeah. get out of it. It can be very positive, but yeah, for sure. I don't know. I think it's just like I draw the line at like the beatings of child labor and the homophobia and the racism. <laughs> Yeah, and the sexism. The and the sexism. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. everything else. Yeah. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the twelve tribes in a nutshell. I, there's so much more. I feel like you could find out about them. Like every article I read, there was a tiny new little sliver of information that I was like, "What the? This just gets worse." Like, yeah, I bet. Yeah, but yeah. Like I said, there was like a podcast that's supposed to come out with like twelve episodes that I could not find existed. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Yeah, what happened with so, that? But yeah, so I just I wanted to cover the main points, especially like the child abuse and the child endangerment, essentially. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm happy. I'm happy that I never ended up going there and supporting them because I'm yeah. like, hella guilty now. Yeah, for sure. Um, I wrote, it makes me want to be like those annoying assholes who protest outside the Planned Parenthood. Like, I want to go take like a, these guys are a cult right Don't outside the restaurant. Here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yikes. That's crazy. And it's I know crazy wa- that stuff like that happens like present day. And I had no, it's been there for years. It's been there since I was a kid and I've had no idea that's what it was about. Yeah. That's so weird. It's yeah, it's it like you said, it's crazy that this is happening. And it's not just, you know, it's not just in that tiny town of Chilliwack, BC. Like it's fucking it's worldwide. Everywhere. It's worldwide. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It's so fascinating and so sad. Like those poor kids. Cause I didn't include it, but like you know they basically encourage like in their rules and doctrines and stuff they encourage child beating and saying like you must beat the sin out of the children like this is how you grow up to be a man like how they grow up to be like smart men and women and stuff like that's how you shape a man I'm like no i hate that yeah that's not how you shape anybody like, like yeah oh that's how you beat a horrible man yeah <laughs> beat that's how you shape a horrible man i mean yeah it's just so dark and so messed up yeah that's horrible so if you see you know a yellow deli or i think the coffee shop's called common ground um i feel like i've heard of common ground yeah Uh, i'm trying to think of the other restaurant like and it's not even just opposed to like restaurants and stuff it's like i think they even have like a construction company somewhere what I know. They have, like, various little businesses. I'm going to see if I can try and find it. But, yeah, they're now in Kingston. I think it's fairly recent, like, as of 2018. Yeah, they're on Princess Street. I just Googled it. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they have, their, they have their own printing company that has printing services. Uh, a, a construction company based in Plymouth. Another construction company in just a southeastern U.S. Greener Formula. So it's, like, a soap and body care thing okay oh their their farm one of their farms is like common sense farm which is like another soap and body care stuff it's interesting that it's called common sense when they're a cult i know (laughs) and common sense would tell you not to join a cult and then yeah common grounds cafe and then yellow deli are like the two like more like they have different like the same name but they're everywhere okay yeah it's it's insane and they're everywhere. They're all throughout the states, which also means that like each one of those places have like members. I, I should have wrote it down, but I think I think it was like up to three thousand members, which doesn't seem like a lot for how many locations. They yeah, have. that's weird. Yeah, and I feel like they wouldn't get like that much attention if it was mm-hmm. only three thousand. Yeah, it was three thousand members at like a specific yeah like part of it. Like I don't know, who knows? Or like that's just all they're admitting to having. Yeah. Well, there's a bunch of common grounds in the states. Mm-hmm. They're everywhere. Mm-hmm. New York, Massachusetts, Vermont, Kingston, Pennsylvania. It's crazy. I think there's like a yellow deli in like California. Because I remember, I'm assuming it was the MFM ladies that had mentioned it. I don't know if they covered this because mm-hmm. I couldn't find it. But 
Yeah. I just, I had to cover this cult because it was like just outside my hometown for yeah. still. Yeah. Like my friends. And now it's in there. my hometown. Yeah. Now it's in Kingston. It's like crazy. There's one in Manitoba. I know you don't think it's real, but <laughs> <laughs> there's one in there. Like the, oh, the wow. guy that went undercover, I think went to the Manitoba one. Okay. So that's where he got all that, which is, yeah. It's just cults are wild, man. I'm so fascinated by them. They're yeah, it's so messed up. Really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> really, really crazy. I think anything where you need to <laughs> give up who you are is never a great idea. <laughs> no. And yeah. like, I feel like it's easy to sit here and be like, oh, like, what the fuck? Like, how would you ever join a cult? Yeah. Like, how would you not know? But like, clearly it happens. And like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I think that's what last year, 2020, taught me was that everyone thinks differently. And not all of it's correct. <laughs> no, like not wearing a mask. Yeah. And, <laughs> and like COVID it, it, being a lie. And I think cults definitely prey on people who are not in a great space of mind. Like, yeah. you know, like it is a lot of like ex addicts and stuff that need religion or need something, need someone to tell them what to do, basically. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like looking for direction and yeah. It's where salvation. They end up. Yeah. It's really sad. But. It is. I mean, if you're happy living that life, then all the power to you. Just don't yeah. hurt. Just don't hurt anybody. Yeah, just don't be a dick. <laughs> life, life's mantra: like, just do what you want. Just don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. My God, it's crazy. Oh, why is that? We got one. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like I need a nap now. I'm I know. Just, like, exhausted from all the information. Oh, God, so much. It's crazy. What are we talking about next week? Are we back I think it's to a crime? true crime. I think it's a true crime episode. Yeah. So. Nice. Oh, speaking of next week, it will actually be next week because we're uploading weekly now. Yeah. So that's new. Yeah. We're. This is going to be the third, third or fourth in a row. Mm. Third, I think. I don't know. But we're we're tr we're trying yeah. weekly and seeing how it goes. Yeah. We've been, we've been able much. to keep up with it. So. Yeah. So hopefully we can keep that going. Yeah. Um, we should mention again too, like if people like us to rate us and subscribe, subscribe and do it, whatever <laughs> you're yeah. supposed to do. We still don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not a YouTuber. What, what does it say? Like, click that little button or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, smash that like button. Yeah, smash. That's what they always say. <laughs> smash that subscribe button. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, apparently it helps. So. Yeah. And, oh. and we like doing this, and we'll probably still keep doing it. Yeah, but. I don't care if nobody <laughs> listens. Yeah, <laughs> we could talk. I like doing it. I like, honestly, I've learned so much about so much in the last yeah. couple months of doing this, and it's yeah. so fascinating. Yeah, it really is. Really, I I'm, yeah. feel like I'm becoming so annoying to Jeff because we'll be like talking, and I'll just like start talking about like this cult that I'm doing research on. Like, <laughs> he's like, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, it's good. It's yeah. fun. It's a nice little yeah. passion project for now. exactly. I guess that's... I'm really just like sad now. <laughs> I know it was a heavy one. I was not. I didn't know how dark it was going to be going into it. And then the more I did research, I was like, oh, oh, it's got child abuse. I don't yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, just crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then next week's just gonna be true crime, so it's gonna be another awful it's gonna be story. More. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> At least we can laugh through our pain. Yeah. That's how we Sometimes cope. we get the ghost ones, which are just creepy and not. Yeah, those are more fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some of them are sad. Like, I talked about like, a father and daughter that got killed. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, the and, two girls yeah. that drowned in mine and yeah, the guy like, that tried to save them. It's just really sad stuff. So It is. Well, anyway. <laughs> until next time. Keep on creeping on. Bye.